Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lisa and in this video, I'm going to discuss the impotent male narcissist. Now for my male viewers, obviously this is, <laughs> this I am talking about men here simply because physically women cannot be impotent. So just want to get that out here. There is no male bashing going on. So. I've seen so many videos and I have read so many articles on narcissists and sex. Most of what I have read had to do with the insatiable sex addicted narcissist. And I have heard from many survivors that the only part of their relationship with the narcissist that was satisfying at all and was good was the sexual relationship. That was not my experience. So I began researching if there was a connection between narcissism and impotence. And what I discovered was that men who have been raised in an environment that promotes hyper masculinity were far more likely to experience impotence and or erectile dysfunction, which is actually two different things. So a hyper masculine environment may be may include a man that was raised by a parent or parents where they were ridiculed or even punished for exhibiting vulnerability this vulnerability was viewed as a sign of weakness therefore qualities that are generally and stereotypically uh, viewed as feminine such as the quality of compassion warmth and emotional sensitivity those were looked upon as signs of weakness, of not being a real man. And this happened when the narcissist was a child because narcissism is formed in childhood. So erectile dysfunction and or impotence can actually be the effect of the emotional disturbances associated with narcissism. Narcissist can't handle criticism, whether that criticism is real or perceived. Erectile dysfunction can be a way of avoiding potential criticism. Narcissists will also tend to blame their partner, which is one of the many ways that they project and deflect their own shortcomings onto their partner. They're deeply insecure. They have an extremely fragile sense of self. The inherent nature of the narcissist is to mask their insecurity even from themselves. The narcissist will often avoid sex altogether because their fragile sense of self fears being judged for not being able to perform. They fear the risk of failure. So I'm always real on this channel and I'm going to get super personal here. My ex-husband was literally 100% impotent throughout our entire relationship. He was impotent by his own admission long before I ever met him. And this was a problem for me. I had never experienced this ever before in my life. And I could not understand what the problem was when I first discovered that there was a problem. So right now you're probably thinking, Lisa, why did you stay with a man who couldn't perform sexually if that was what was important to you? And why did you marry him? Okay, first of all, don't victim blame. <laughs> Secondly, I'll tell you why. Here's why. Even though most relationships, especially in our modern world, and especially with narcissists, people get involved with sex pretty early on in the dating game. I am just not that person. I like to get to know someone and establish an emotional connection first. In fact, the very first time my husband kissed me, which was on our very first date, I told him I wanted to take things slowly, that I, that I wanted a longer courtship before becoming physical. He was also coming out of a long-term relationship and I wanted that to be fully done and over before becoming intimate with him. So when he readily agreed to this, 
I thought, wow, he is such a gentleman. And that was part of what drew me closer to him. Now, of course, he would text me sexy messages and talk to me over the phone and in person about how phenomenal it would be when we finally did become sexual. And I am not gonna lie, that was a sexy time for me. My anticipation was over the top. So after some time, when we did become intimate, I was shocked. I couldn't understand what was wrong. And I was extremely hesitant to say anything. Like I said, I'd never experienced this before. And I thought if I said something, it would make him self-conscious and therefore make this condition worse. And just as a side note here, he didn't have occasional erectile dysfunction. He was completely impotent. We were together seven years and not once did we ever have intercourse. Yeah, sad but true. <laughs> Embarrassing to admit, but again, I'm being real here. So when we finally had a discussion on the subject, he told me that his issues were due to the fact that he has diabetes and he also has diabetic neuropathy. However, he claimed that the main reason was because his ex-girlfriend was so toxic that he had lost his desire, his libido, everything during that relationship. And he assured me that with my love and support and because he so wanted to satisfy me, all of it would come back and he would be healed. Of course, I believe that. Now, when that didn't happen, I suggested trying medication and he refused for years, saying that he was afraid of the side effects. Now, I loved him and I didn't want to endanger his health for what I believed would be my own selfish reasons. After all, I married him and I vowed in sickness and in health. So I just settled for a less than satisfactory sex life. Now, amazingly, shortly before I ended up leaving him, which was after seven years, he saw a doctor and he came home with medication for erectile dysfunction. It was actually in that moment that I knew in my heart that he was only trying to fix his broken member in order to attract new supply. And I was irritated that he had waited so long and he, ref and he had refused medication for so long, but now he wanted to try it. And on top of this, he began insinuating that I was cheating on him. And since that wasn't true, my suspicions were raised even more. Remember, whatever they accuse you of is what they're doing or what they're planning to do. So by now, not only did he have diabetes with his blood sugar numbers unstable, completely out of control most of the time, along with increasing diabetic neuropathy, he had also developed high blood pressure along with several other issues. So these medical issues greatly decrease the chances of erectile dysfunction medication working and the medication did not work for him. Now, even though I could feel it in my gut that he was grooming new supply, the logical part of me thought, how is he going to have an affair? He's impotent. But lo and behold, <laughs> my intuition was correct. And he did find a willing woman. He found a much older, less attractive woman who had money, who was just coming out of a, of a divorce, who was very needy, and more than anything else, willing to be his dirty little secret. So now you may be thinking, well, Lisa, you put up with his impotence. Why should you be surprised some other woman did the same? And that is a valid point. I suppose the difference for me was I was never his affair partner. 
he wasn't married when I met him and I wasn't willing to be anyone's his or anyone else dirty little secret so in that way I am not the same as her and she's settling for even less than I did because to put it bluntly his oral skills greatly diminished throughout the relationship as well to the point I rarely had any interest at all in any kind of sexual activity with him. It was just frustrating and unsatisfactory to say the least. And the irony in all of this is I have never had a man talk more or brag more about his sexual history than my ex-husband did. I used to think he was just reminiscing and reminding himself of his glory days when he was virile and now honestly i don't believe he was ever the sexual master he claimed to be so tell me did any of you have an impotent narcissist if you're comfortable sharing your experience i'd love to hear from others who dealt with this thank you all so much for watching and may you be blessed.